Hey everyone, it's Trader Rob. Today is PMI Day. What is PMI Day? It is a high impact news morning. Let me let you know how I trade days like today. Order right submitted. After the intro. And as always, nothing that I state on this channel is financial advice. Trading futures or any type of trading is risky business. Any capital that you put out there is at risk. Sorry, right as I was doing my intro, it looked like we got a trade set up here on the NQ. Um, I will kind of let you know as to why I turned on the NQ, which was pretty, just turned it on right before starting this video. It's 9.36 on December 1st. Um, this morning, PMI. Uh, big red news, high impact news um, day at, we had news coming out at 9 a.m. In my Discord this morning, I mentioned, uh, I put in the trade. Order submitted. I put in the trading floor. Order submitted. All right, we're in a trade here on a five minute goal line. Let's see what we can get here. Let's see. stop seems very order canceled very small stop there on that trade I didn't like that one well as i say that it saved my it saved my behind from a bigger uh, a bigger loss got a setup here in oil on the five minute red line Let's see if that gets activated over here on the right. So took a loss here on the NQ. Um, going back to PMI. So in my Discord on the trading floor before Order canceled. the 8 a.m. session, I, I stated that I was going to be sitting out the markets um, in oil and in gold until um, actually for both sessions in oil and um, the one session in gold. And um, my reasoning for that was, you know, on, on days of high news impact, especially so close to the open at 9 a.m. Central Time, I, I just feel like there's a lot of positioning and there's a huge spike that you're going to get at 9 a.m. Um, and that spike can either go for you or go against you. It's pretty much just gambling at that point, and I would rather, I'd rather save my bullets for a more high probability day to trade. So uh, if we pull up our charts, looks like oil canceled out over here. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot. All right, so gold did not have a setup in the eight to nine a.m. session. There was uh, several traders in my Discord in the gold room. Um, that sounded funny, gold room. <laughs> the, the gold trading channel room in my Discord. They, um, th there was a, a lot of people that got in on this last inside bar. Um, personally, that doesn't fit my strategy um, just because you would be taking that trade at... Um, uh, after our session hours, which is from eight to nine. So um, if you go back into look into my video, which is in the description below, around the 14 minute mark, you'll see where I mentioned that um, that rule in my strategy, I won't trade this first inside bar because your source candle would be pre-session. And I don't take the last one because then you're trading outside of that session. So that's gold. Uh, I know some people profited off of that this morning, but that was not a trade that I would take just because of my rules. And then secondly, I was sitting out the market um, this morning. And if we look at oil, um, again, I was not trading this um, 8 a.m. session. We did get a... Um, we did get a activation on the inside bar here at 8.15. This ended up being a loser in CL. Um, we got inside bar pre-market again, just, just to go over the rules. This is not something that I would that I would trade on even on any other day. 
Um, but first session would have been a loser. I sat that one out. Um, so sometimes it's sometimes not taking a trade is is the best trade. Uh, and could it work out? Yeah, of course they can. But ultimately, you would like to you would like to keep your setups to as high probability as you possibly can. Um, and as I mentioned, I was not going to take a trade in the second session, even though, I mean, news is kind of um, dwindled at this point and markets are kind of, you know, settling back in. Um, so if you took a trade here mid second session in oil, if, if there was a trade set up, um, you know, I, I guess you'd be OK with that. I just decided not to not to trade it this morning. With that also said, I. I had the bot turned off until about nine, until about nine thirty, maybe nine twenty-five. I turned it on um, just so I can let the market kind of, kind of find its rhythm after the news um, cycle and see what type of trades um, the bot could take. So day four, we finished with a loss yesterday at three hundred and fifty-seven dollars. So our account sits now at four thousand seven hundred and thirty-one. Um, I, you know, I, I had an explanation of all three of the trades yesterday and definitely do not want to make the same mistake of not being in front of the charts when trading the bots. Um, you know, in my first challenge, I would say probably 60% of all of the trades were with no interaction whatsoever. Um, and you know, it ended up breaking even the, I, I, believe that there is an advantage to being in front of the charts. That's for sure. Um, case in point, you have something like this morning where you've got a big red news event and I just don't want to be trading that prior or afterwards. Um, as far as the NASDAQ, I did not take my 835 NQ trade. Um, I haven't made a video on it yet. Um, didn't take that trade. I'm glad I did it because that would have lost this morning. Uh, again, just that pre-new high event news positioning, just indecision, don't like it. Um, and right now I will be looking for a 15-minute NQ reversal, uh, Rob reversal. I don't... Um, let me throw this one up on the screen. So here at 8.30... We got a long um, setup, but it closed below the ADMA, so no trade. Um, looks like here there could be something forming, um, but I doubt that this is going to close above the ADMA, so there's going to probably be a trade there. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here in um, on that, but as of right now, I am looking to hopefully see if the if we do get a trade set up there that, that ends up working. So today I'm, I'm hoping that we could take a, a good profitable trade on the bot. My setups this morning obviously didn't net me any money, but they also didn't, um, didn't lose any money and they would have lost that oil trade would have lost for me. So, uh, a no trade this morning is like money in my pocket, to be honest with you. So let's see what type of setups the bot can take. Let's see, um, if any other setups show up on the NQ, um, and stick around for my trade recaps. Order submitted. Order submitted. All right, here we get into a NASDAQ short off of a five minute red line. Entry on this trade was at 15,909. Original take profit, full take profit was at 891. And stop loss is at 9.17, so about eight points of stop. We're about 100 bucks positive on this trade. And here's my, here's my feeling on this one. I like the trade because of the fact that the price action held that five-minute red line for... One, two, three, four, five candles. So I actually felt like we had a pretty good 
support line there to anchor this trade. Stop loss, I thought gave us enough space. And you, as you guys just saw me right now, I ended up moving up my take profit. Now you're gonna say, Rob, why'd you, why did you move up your take profit? Well, if you if you were watching price action this morning, um, especially after the news at 9 a.m., we started to kind of price action was starting to get a little flat, especially here. And you could see to the left, price action was starting to get kind of flat, and I just didn't see really large moves happening yet. And I felt like I felt like that level that I moved my stop up to to me just seemed like a very, 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 very natural place where price action would want to go. And not to say that it couldn't get to that second level because price action has touched that pretty recently. So the original take profit, um, you can make a case for, for that one as well. But I felt that the first pivot here where I've got my take profit order at now was just a very, very logical place for price action to want to go especially if it can continue to use the five minute red line as a level of support. That was, that was my thinking behind this trade. And I was actually, I was okay with this, the, the trade that this bot took. Now, in hindsight, you're looking at a lot more consolidation here, right at this, right at this amount. Um, and based on the trouble that it was having of getting away from this area, you know, it's um, it, it maybe doesn't turn into the best setup that way. But I don't have the power of hindsight uh, when I'm in the trade, so I'm basing everything off of what I'm looking at exactly at that minute. So this trade, I think at its peak, gets about $100 or $110 of profit so far. And then we can see here what price action, you know, it's just it's definitely bouncing in this range. We get a tick there, a tick away from hitting our full stop loss on that one, which again is about eight points. And and during this trade, I'm just thinking to myself, if we can get any push past this five. It's, cause it's, it's the funny thing is it's bouncing in between the five minute red line and the five minute goal line. So, and my, and my thinking is if we can get a push through this five minute goal line, we would be golden. That's kind of a joke, but not funny. But that was honestly my feeling. If we can get a push here through that five minute goal line, I think that my take profit here is 100% into play. So we're getting to about that six minute mark. Order canceled. Six minute mark in the trade. We get knocked out. Okay, but here's here's what I want to tell you about this trade. This trade in a few candles. Nothing really nothing 
We don't get any more movements up. It's it, it bounces off of that five minute red line a few more times. But we re- we we got knocked out of this trade by by a tick, okay. And a few candles later, we get a rip to the downside that just goes would have just taken my my take profit with zero problems in one candle. So the trade setup was right. We unfortunately got knocked out oh, literally by a tick and this would have been a very very nice profitable trade but this is trading lost in the nq order submitted all right here we get into a trade setup on a long in oil on the cl and this is a pullback into the five minute red line um I like the trade just because the fact that we had this pretty damn good push up. Um, it was almost a 50 tick move um, right to the left of this entry, and then we get a we get a uh, I would say a stronger pullback down, and kind of holding up support. And this is I don't know. To me, it seems like a pretty Maybe a little bit more space. And actually, no, I, I really like the trade. Um, you know, at this point, I almost feel like if we can get past this pivot, we're going to be in a very good spot. Um, maybe I would move down my target um, from here just because I know that oil is um, has already made some, some pretty big moves this morning. But... Overall, I'm, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with the, the trade setup. You know, I'm just looking for, for, a, for a decent push upwards. And here I start to get a little bit excited because, you know, we're starting to get a pretty, two healthy green candles here. Um, you know, we get a push there, I think almost to a hundred bucks. And profit. Our trailing stop now it gets activated. So, you know what I'm telling myself is, all right, we just took a little less than half of our risk off the table. Still a decent amount of room in this trade for this trade to to kind of work for us. So, I actually think that the trailing stop here does a very good job. And we got another little push, and um, I think at that point we we're maybe up 110 bucks. So overall, feeling okay with this trade. Now, if this um, candle here closes and we're still in this trade, you're going to see that our trailing stop should get activated. There you go. So it gets activated again. Um, and now I probably have a tick, maybe two ticks of risk here on this trade. I think it's maybe a tick. So for me, almost break even trade minus commissions. Order canceled. So here I get knocked out. I like the trade. I like the trade setup. Um, just didn't work out for me on this one. Lost in the CL. There you have it. <clears throat> An end to the PMI day. Bot took three trades today. Three losses in on the bot. So I really should have just I should have just listened. Here, here's my here's the thing. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, um, today was a high impact news day with PMI coming out at 9 a.m. Central. That's half an hour after the open. So I had already stated in my Discord and earlier in this video that I was not going to be trading oil session one or session two or gold and um, that I would like to, I would open up the bot 
you know, after about 9.30, once the, uh, once kind of the dust had settled in PMI. But here's the thing, and I've documented this a few times on my channel, um, through my back testing, I'm sorry, not my back testing, through my, my journaling, I have just always noticed that on these PMI, uh, FOMC, PCE, um, you know, these high impact news days generally seem to be like my worst trading days. And statistically, even Fridays don't always, haven't always been the most best days, but the last few Fridays I've been pretty, pretty um, profitable. So I'm not taking the day of the week, but the news cycle is something that, you know, it, it I just haven't traded well with it. So I was able to preserve capital today by not taking certain trades. Um, obviously, if we take a look here at, at oil, we would have lost um, on this first trade here, got activated to the long. It was actually a, it was a, it was a strange one because it literally ticked into this trade and some people that, you know, trade this thing with an offset of a tick, so they didn't get in, or some people had slippage and they didn't get in, and then um, got activated to the short. Either way, you lost in session one. Um, and then we go into session two, and session two gives you, you know, where I, I even said it, I think at this point, you're, you're probably okay to trade. Um, but I, I said I was going to set, set out the second session as well. And this thing activated to the long full take profit, 22 ticks. So you could have extracted some, you could have extracted some ticks from, from the, from the market today in oil. Overall, I'm very happy not trading it. Um, if I take a look at gold, let's see here what, um, what gold did. So this is the only session that we're trading um, gold in. I'm not looking at this green section. Um, as I mentioned, there was a an inside bar that happened on the last on the last candle that closed at 9 a.m. Now I know in Discord there was several people that got into this trade um, based on my strategy rules. We do not take the first inside bar or that last inside bar because here you're using the source candle from pre-session and here you're getting into the trade after our session. So I would not have taken this trade. Um, and you, if you could have gotten into this trade, which would have been very difficult, uh, you would have taken full take profit very quickly. And why was there this big spike? That was exactly um, corresponding to the um uh to pmi coming out okay so that was the exact same time so you're you're gonna get this spike and and obviously today this would have worked but this is gambling i mean this is in my opinion this is just strictly close your eyes and see which way this is gonna go um another thing too is that at, right at 9 a.m this thing's spiked like crazy. I mean, there's very, di very difficult to get a manual order in. Um, so unless you're trading this on a bot or something like that, it would be very, very difficult. Um, so no trade in, in gold. Okay. If I pull up my NQ chart, I did not take my 835 NQ trade this morning. Um, I usually count on that trade for a good 250 per day um with a very very high win rate and, and today i didn't take the trade just because of the news cycle especially going into it it was at 8 30 and the news hits at 9 um which was a very smart decision because i would have lost that trade um and then on my 15 minute rob reversal trade we get a few a few signals but nothing um that worked out today so here we get our first signal to go long at 8 30. Um, this closes below the ADMA and does not get you into this trade. Obviously, it would have been a big loser there. Um, but that rule, uh, no, no trade there. We get another long signal here that closes 
below the ADMA, so no trade. Um, this one obviously would have caught would have caught this whole move up here, but doesn't fit the um, doesn't fit the the strategy. We then get two short signals. Um, both of them are invalidated because they close above the ADMA. Obviously, you'd want to stay out of that trend. I mean, this there's a reason why these things pop, these arrows pop up. Um, and there's a reason why the ADMA is there. You know, I mean, people can look at this strategy and come up with a hundred different other filters and confluences and indicators that can maybe make this thing better or make this thing worse. If it works, great. From what I have traded this at the 15 minute time frame, it tends to keep you out of a lot more losing trades. And it's able to identify the one trade that ends up hitting, going for those 35 points like we got yesterday. And then we got another we had another um, short signal that would have been already too late in the day. So that's already past 115. So no good there. So no trades on the NQ reversal. Um, obviously took took a loss on um, took a loss on the bot today. Let me pull up the PNL. Should have had this one open already. There it is. All right, so took a $227 loss today on the bot, bringing our account balance to 4,500. And um, it, I mean, it is what it is, the bot lost today. So do I feel optimistic? Yes. Do I feel like I can come back from this? Absolutely. Um, do I feel like maybe I need to go down to five micros instead of one E-mini? Possibly. Possibly. Um, but it's easy to say that when you're down 500. So we'll keep an eye on that. And trade performance, which is going to look like shit, but... Where's trade performance? Here you are, big guy. Nope, that's not trade performance. This is trade performance right here. All right, so three trades, three losers. Um, commissions, total loss, 227 bucks today. It is what it is, man. It's Friday. I hate the feeling of going into a weekend with um, being down. I'm only down with the bot. My account was zero. So sometimes no trades is a good trade. Sometimes not trading it is profitable. I know, trust me, and, I, and I, I'm not saying that I don't fall into a trap sometime that, that, you know, this is exciting. Trading is super exciting and that we want to take trades and we know that the only way to make money is by taking trades. But you start to learn, you start to learn that statistically, take the, take whatever statistical advantage you can get in trading. And the only way you're going to figure that out is by journaling your trades. Now, I personally use Excel. I log each trade in. I know you can get fancy. There's some other software programs out there that logs it for you. Um, but here's my here's my thinking with that. And I bust me up on the comments. I don't know. I felt because I did try. I can't remember which one. I think it was TradeWiz, um, which I tried for journaling. Um, and this is not a knock against them. It worked. I just felt that when everything was automated, I didn't look at it. In Excel, I got to go in there and put in my trades. So it's there's that physical um, accountability of putting in the trade. And here's another thing. 
And I thought this was the most ridiculous thing when I first started. Put as many notes as you possibly can. Like, and this is going to sound ridiculous. Put how you're feeling. How did you feel about the trade? Were you nervous? Were you confident? What made you get into the trade? What made you stay out of the trade? What was happening around the time of the trade? The more data points that you can get on your journal, the better that journal is going to do for you in your trading. And it's very easy for me to now look up certain dates from the year past and say, okay, well, you know what? I traded like shit this day. And oh, look at that. I, I traded like shit on that day. Oh, there's a correlation there because the same freaking report came out on the same day or on the same days. And I didn't do well. So why repeat madness? So that's what kept me out of my trades. It didn't get kicked me out of the bot. I should have probably just turned the bot off today. Um, but I'm not worried about it. I really feel like I can definitely come back on that one, one good trade and we're back in business. Um, what else? That's, I think that's all I got for you guys. You know, um, positive week of trade of trading. November, I ended up green. I think I let you guys know that um, I, I had told you guys that I needed to be positive in December to be positive for the year. November, I finished off six months of consistently being in the green. Guys, that's huge. For me, that is a huge huge accomplishment and i'm not going to say that my morning oil and my nq trade is what's gotten me there but it's it, it has i mean the 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 style of trading that i have switched to has has put me in a profitable place Will it last forever? I don't know. Will something cause me to change strategies? I don't know, maybe. But this is the style of trading that I enjoy. I feel like I have a lot less emotion involved in my trades. And I feel like I have concrete rules on what to trade and when to trade. So with that being said, I hope you guys, um, first of all, have a great weekend. Um, take a look at some of my videos. Um, if you want to over the weekend, t take a look at some of the strategy videos I have listed in the description. Um, please, please, please like this video if you liked it. Uh, leave me a comment. Either way, the good, the bad, the ugly, leave me a comment, please, and subscribe to the channel. Happy trading, everyone.